Hello, my name is Pastor Freddy Reynosa, and I am the senior pastor at the Stoner Memorial Seventh-day Adventist Church on Novelty Hill in Stoner, Massachusetts. Our church has been serving the greater Boston area for over a hundred years through ministry, education, and community service. You can find out more about us at our website, stonamemorial.org, or visiting us in person at 29 Maple Street. We thank you for joining us here at our weekly church service. Hello. Happy Sabbath. I want to welcome you to, the ch to our church this morning. We're um, really happy that you're worshiping with us. And uh, we're really excited for our Pathfinder Sabbath today, too. Um, I wanted to bring my uniform, but uh, it needed a little bit of adjustments. If you understand what I'm trying to say, it was some 26 years ago. Just a small, tiny adjustment. But uh, we're, uh, we're thankful that uh, we can have this wonderful Sabbath today where we can uh, uh, spend some time uh, with Jesus here in this place. And also, I want to welcome all of you who are watching us. Uh, thank you for watching us. I think we have uh, some announcements that I probably forgot. Uh, old age is coming earlier than expected. Um, do we have the second reading today for... Yeah, we have a second reading for... I think it's Tom. He's transferring his membership from our church okay yes Tom Kelly yes. he is moving to or he already moved to Florida <laughs> he's missing this beautiful weather here but uh, yeah um, we needed to do his second reading uh, today so that he can transfer his membership there so, um, do we have a motion to, for him to move his membership there? Okay, do we have a second? Okay. All those in favor say, vaya con Dios. Yes. Go with God. And, uh, um, and today is a very special Sabbath too. Because uh, one thing that happens uh, in Sabbath uh, is that we dedicate the day to God. And, uh, um, and today is really, really special because besides dedicating our day to God, we want to dedicate uh, a family to God this morning. A beautiful family that we have here. And, uh, uh, and I'm going to ask Elver, Livy, and, uh, um, and Isaiah, Philip. So the family can come here. So you, all of you can, all of you who are there can see our newest church member. This is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful occasion. Uh, Psalms 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. 
And then in verse 3, children, it says, are a heritage from the Lord. Children are a heritage from the Lord. It took me some time to understand that my children are not really mine, but they belong to the Lord. He has given you um, Isaiah so that you can watch over him. And, uh, and when Jesus comes, he's going to ask you for him. So we need to understand, number one, that Isaiah Philip belongs to the Lord. Heritage from the Lord. And it continues saying, the psalm is here. Children are a heritage from the Lord. Offspring a reward for, for, from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one youth. Blessed is the man and blessed is the woman also. Who, whose quiver is full of them. I took that literally, so I have five children. <laughs> so you have some work to do too. We're going to be praying for that. It says, they will not put to shame. That means the parents will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. In ancient times, uh, all of the disputes were settled there. It was not really a court, but it was uh, in the entrance of the city where people would meet and, and discuss and take their cases. So it says that the person who has children, their children will defend the parent. They will speak for you. That means that, that they will trust you. One of the things that I have learned as a, as a dad is that children are, are always watching and they will learn some things from us. They will observe what we do, not just what we tell them, but what we do, which is one of the reasons that, that we are not qualified to be parents. None of us is. We need the help of the Lord. The good thing is that Jesus is interested in that. Um, he wants to be the center of your home. That's why he says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. There are some things that, that Isaiah cannot do. Um, he cannot come to church by himself. Even though he wants to, you need to bring him to church. He cannot read yet. So you have to read to him. Um, you need to pray. You need to teach him to pray. Because it was Solomon who, who said that, that we need to instruct the children, teach them in the Lord. So that when they are older, they will not depart from the past. They will remain there. You know, this is so important for me. Because Jesus took time for the children. When uh, the busiest person that has lived in this world it was Jesus. And the disciples thought that, that he didn't have time for children. So... They try to hinder the children for, from approaching Jesus. And Jesus says, let the little children come to me. And do not hinder them. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The children, the kingdom of heaven belongs to children. So, Levi and Albert, you know, uh, we think of us teaching our children and that's really important that we teach them. But I, I'm sure that you know that they also teach us. We learn a lot from them too. One of the things that we learn, and I'm sure that all of you parents know, is that 
even if we are selfish, when it comes to our children, we rather die or give whatever we have so that they can have the things that we don't have. We prefer to suffer than for them to suffer. So they teach us so much. That's why Jesus says that we needed to be like little children and that they are forgiving, they are loving. So in a way, you're teaching Isaiah, but he's also teaching you. So for Jesus, there is always place for children. Uh, but raising a child is, 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 is something that, Livy, you cannot do it by yourself. Albert, you cannot do it by yourself. It's something that you too need to do together with the help of the Lord. When, uh, when Manoah and his wife received, his wife received a visit of an angel because she was going to have a special child. And, and he wasn't there. And he prayed. And he asked God, I want to also see the angel. I want to also hear what the angel has to say. And the wonderful thing is that the angel, the angel of the Lord came also when he was there. Trying to explain to us that raising children is not just one parent, but it's both parents together. Working together. Because they have to, they have to see that for you. Uh, your love, that you are together, and, and, uh, and bringing him to the Lord. And church, I want to also challenge you this morning to pray for this beautiful family here. That you will pray for this family that they, they will raise Isaiah the way that God wants him to be raised. So when I was looking at uh, the meaning of Isaiah, right, it's, it's God is salvation. God is salvation. It's a beautiful name. And then Philip, what, what did you learn about Philip? It's his grandfather, but I was, it's someone who is loving, but also someone who loves horses. So I don't know if... <laughs> A pony is on the way. If he asks for a pony, <laughs> church, we have to contribute for a pony. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but we're really blessed to, uh, to be part of this. And, uh, uh, and Livy and Albert, I want to challenge you in, in Jesus' name that, that you will ask always for the help of the Holy Spirit to raise Isaiah in the way that God wants to raise him. So at this moment... I'm going, to, I'm going to pray, and uh, I have a certificate that I'm going to give you, and a, and a CD. Uh, this CD is prepared to, when he's crying, it's going to make him fall asleep. But if he doesn't, you too will fall asleep. <laughs> so it works either way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we're, uh, we're going to pray and ask God for his blessing. And you can join us, please. Father in heaven, we thank you for, for this beautiful day. And we thank you, Lord, because, uh, Father, today is a special day uh, for uh, the Bowden family. As they, Lord, are dedicating their family, but in a special way, Lord, I say it to you, knowing that, understanding that they are not able to do this by themselves, but they are looking for your help and asking you, Lord, that you can guide them, that you can be with them, that you give them, Lord, your Holy Spirit. And Father, uh, that understanding that their task is never done until that day when Jesus comes and he asks them, where is Isaiah? And they will respond, here is Isaiah and the children that you have given me. Lord, help us to all of us to be uh, good examples for them. Help us, Lord, to pray for them always, to lift up this family to you. 
And Father, we also pray for our children who may not be here, who learn about Jesus by have walked away. But we trust in your promise, Lord, that you will bring them back. Be with this family in a special way, Lord, because we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so I present you the newest, cutest <laughs> <laughs> member of our church family, Isaiah Philip. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Today, the story I'm going to be reading is For Friend Help. This story actually took place a few days after Jesus touched a man who had leprosy and made him better. Jesus was going from town to town performing miracles, and everyone wanted to see him. People were excited whenever they heard that Jesus was in their area because they either wanted to see a miracle or be the one who was healed. So... As Jesus entered one of the homes in Capernaum, people quickly gathered around him. So many people came that there was no room left, not even outside. I can imagine that people were pushing each other to squeeze everyone in. Plus, there were people gathered outside to see and hear Jesus when he came out. At that point, things got interesting. There were four men who heard Jesus was in town. They decided to carry their paralyzed friend on a mat to Jesus and see if their friend could be healed. As soon as they got to the house where Jesus was, they realized they wouldn't be able to see him. The Bible says that after digging through the roof, the men lowered the mat with their paralyzed friend on it before Jesus. The first thing Jesus said when they saw that he believed in him was, son, your sins are forgiven. The paralyzed men got up and walked, and then the crowd was amazed. They praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. Now let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to place our hands in your hands, in the hands of each other, that we may walk together and work together until our nightmares are ended. And your dream for us and all your creations is realized on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Good morning, church. Today, our, our offerings go to the local church budget. Is our faithfulness to God first? Ellen G. White noted the following. We are not to consecrate to him what remains of our income after all our real or imaginary wants are satisfied. Before any, any portion is consumed, we should set apart that which God has specified as his. Many persons will meet all inferior demands and dues and leave to God only the last glanzing, glenning, if there be any. If not, he cause must wait till a more convenient season. When we are unfaithful with our tithes and offerings, we are sending a message. We send a message that when we choose to put God and spreading of the gospel as a secondary or tertiary priority, we send a message that his cause must wait. The plan of salvation was activated and Jesus volunteered to die for humanity on the cross. But what if he had said, I don't really know about this, or why don't we wait a bit and see how this whole thing will play out? Could you imagine if Jesus would have chosen to relegate humanity and its salvation as, as non-important? God placed the salvation of humanity as a first priority in his life from the foundation of the world. According to Ephesians 1.4, 
Let us remain faithful and place God first as well by returning his tithes and offerings. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Today's scripture reading is in Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together, 
so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, being a paratic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paratic was laying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paratic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for that we get a rest on your holy day. Thank you for that everybody who's watching at home can see that you can work many miracles, that you can let us come here to church, even though this pandemic is trying to, no, Satan is trying to make us not come here because of the pandemic. Thank you for letting us be here to represent you. Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for putting food on our plates, giving us shelter, and giving us this time to be with you. Please help all the people who couldn't be today to see you and come here one more time to celebrate that you're coming soon. In the name of Jesus, amen. For the honor and glory of God. I keep finding voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. single lie that tells me I will never measure Am I more than just a sum of every high and every low Remind me once again just who I need to know Ooh, oh, You say I'm love When I can feel a thing You say I am strong When I think I'm weak You say I am hell When I am falling short And when I don't belong Oh, you say Now I'm laying it at your feet. 
morning church happy sabbath um let's start with a word of prayer dear heavenly father thank you for this day that you've given us thank you for protecting us giving us another day of life please continue to bless us and help us to understand what i'm going to be preaching please speak through me and jonathan thank you for everything you've done for us lord in jesus name i pray amen In a world full of people injured in the body and soul, the Pathfinders Club is trained to help these wounded with physical and spiritual activities and with the living word of the gospel. How many teenagers and young adults are spiritually and often even morally crippled, destroyed, and wounded? If they went to Jesus Christ, they would receive the miracle of a new heart, new character, but they have no strength or even ability to go to Jesus for they are wounded without the ability in themselves to accept the invitation and walk. How can we bring them to Christ if the invitations made by the church and by the family are not being accepted? If someone crippled or injured cannot walk, how can they be transported using a stretcher? This could be the answer. But what stretcher is able to put our teenagers and juveniles in front of Jesus? The answer is the Pathfinders Club. Let's go to um, Jeremiah 18, uh, 1 through 6. I'll be reading this from the New International Version. And it says, This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to, to the potter's house, and there I will give you the, my, my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the, potter set, but, the, but the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. O house of Israel, can I not do, what, can I not do with you as this potter does, declares the Lord? Like clay in, in the hand of the potter, so you are in my hand, O house of Israel. Amen. Amen. 
a new vase. There are three wonderful lessons in this text. Jeremiah showed that he was a good pathfinder, following two laws of the pathfinders. Do my honest part, go on God's errands. The text says that God commanded he, and he just went, immediately without discussion. More important than understanding God's commands is to obey them. We cannot understand everything God says because we are limited human beings. Even when you don't understand why, be faithful and obedient. A minute after an apparent casual encounter between Jeremiah and the potter, the glass broke into the hands of the potter, who according to his routine gathered the, glass, gathered the mud together and made the glass again. Coincidence is not part of the life of, of which always walks in the ways of Christ. If all things help the good of those who love the Lord, life events cease to be coincidence and become providence. In this exact instant, God interrupts the scene to give the main lesson. Whatever the struggle, problem, or situation of life, God solves by giving us a new heart, even a new body according to Ezekiel 37 in the Valley of Dry Bones. God gives us a new life. God can and wants to transform our heart into a new vessel chosen for his own honor and glory. But the question remains, how can we bring our children to Jesus so that they can be transformed? How to take them to Jesus? Some war, ha some war films have exploited the issue of prisoners of war. The pattern repeats the prisoner's inability in, on the enemy's battlefield to achieve his own victory and freedom. The enemy outweighs in torture and humiliation, taking advantage of the fact that every prisoner of war has one point in common, impotence. They, they are unable to act or react. So many parents, friends, and relatives have prayed for their f children and their teenagers, but nothing seems to happen. Imagine for an instant the throne of God receiving the prayer of an afflicted mother who supplicates God for relief of her son who is on drugs, for example. God attends by, by sending his most powerful angel, which part of God's throne invades the drug sale hills and enters, opens way in the midst of the powers of evil that are, that are there in his own kingdom, and in the midst of the enemy's own territory extends the invitation that was made to him. Son, return, your father calls you. And there in the middle of the night of sin, the weak boy responds to the angel, no. The angel must be withdrawn because although his mission was well accomplished, we have the right to accept or reject in the, God's invitation. The free will of, our ch of your children is often Satan's greatest weapon. How can you rescue them from their own spiritual weakness? How to rescue prisoners of war in the middle of the battlefield? The stretcher. Use the stretcher. Amen. Good morning, church. I'll be reading from Mark 2, 1 to 12. I'll be reading from New King James Version. And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together, so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door, and he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, take up your bed and walk? but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he rose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that, there, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. 
The text clearly describes a house full of people. Verse 2 says that even the doors and windows were full, and four young men brought a paralytic friend to Jesus. We all know that the paralytics do not walk, so four friends led him to Jesus because they knew that Christ is the solution for all evils. But since the house was full, they couldn't even get to the door. The solution was to climb the ceiling. So one thing is clear and correct in this text. The paralytic was carried by four friends on a stretcher, and there was no possibility of reaching Jesus. These friends, persevering, created a solution by lowering the stretcher from a hole they opened themselves in the ceiling. But the most fantastic thing of all is what we find in verse 5, where it says, When Jesus is watching their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. The Bible does not describe any participation of the paralytic, but a blessing of forgiveness of sins and a completely involuntary, miraculous cure, completely independent of the performance of the free will of the paralytic, plus 100% interceded by the faith of those four friends. It is one of the few biblical accounts, or the only one, that describes Jesus doing a miracle on behalf of someone without any attitude or decision by the favored. The big secret is on the stretcher loaded by the four friends. In it, there was the intercessory prayer of four young people of faith, carrying a paralytic friend being immediately attended by Jesus. The Pathfinder Club is one of these God stretchers capable of bringing the teenager to Christ. Thank God the Seventh-day Adventist Church received from God this wonderful weapon against the enemy's traps called the Pathfinders Club. That besides everything that can even replace the virtual friends of Facebook and Instagram with real friends with character and faith, rescuing the lives of morality, faith, and family through a special group that struggles to reach heaven through salvation in Christ Jesus. All you need is to place your children in the stretcher that is represented here by the Pathfinders Club. But note that it is necessary to join the efforts of four friends to carry that stretcher. Four friends carrying the four ropes of the stretcher, the leaders, the family, the church, and friends in the class and club. Ellen G. White says, there is nothing more important than the education of our children and young people. The church must wake up and manifest a deep interest in this work. For now as never, Satan and his host are determined to enlist youth under the black banner that leads to ruin and death. God has designated the church as a watchtower to exercise jealous care over young people and children and to see as a sentinel the enemy approaches to warn a danger. But the church doesn't understand the situation. It sleeps on duty. Thank God we know that united with the Pathfinder Club and the power of the Holy Spirit, we will achieve this important victory in Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us to come and worship you. Thank you because you gave us this time one day a week to um, recognize and um, remember uh, what you have done through our lives. We ask you to please protect us through, um, through this pandemic. Please help us and please let the church members be uh, those, those God stretches for us as they support the Pathfinders Club. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. How many want to thank uh, the Pathfinders 
Annabelle this morning for uh, this beautiful service. We are thankful for everything, and uh, and we continue that we pray that God will continue to bless you and uh, as you continue serving Him. Um, I wanted to to share uh, this with you, the Hebrews thirteen five, that God tells us that He will never leave us and not forsake us. So as we are going through some challenges in our country, let us remember that Jesus is always with us, and he will never leave us nor forsake us. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your presence, and we thank you for all the pathfinders, Lord, and the blessing that they are to our church. We ask them, Lord, that you can bless them, that you bless the leaders, that you bless their parents, Lord, and Bless our church as we support them and uh, encourage them to continue serving you. Father, we also want to ask for our nation. Uh, we're going through these challenges that we are facing. We ask, Father, that you can give us healing, that you can give us peace, and that you can give us hope that uh, very soon you will come again and you will take us to be with you. Be with us, Lord, during this Sabbath, and help us to have peace and to have joy. We ask all this in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Hello, this is Pastor Christy Hodson. Thank you for watching our program today. We hope to see you soon in person or live on YouTube for our Saturday morning worship service. You can also find information about online Bible study groups at our website, stonemmemorialchurch.org. We currently have a food bank and clothing distribution center located at 9 Gary Street and operate Greater Boston Academy, an elementary and preschool at 108 Pond Street. If you have any questions, please call us at 781 Four three eight two nine seven seven. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.